Good morning. We have we have a new employee, Vince. His name is Steven Simich. He's here today. <laughs> Welcome, Steven. <laughs> Is he off his apprenticeship yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not yet. Good. <laughs> is he wearing a tie today? Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's called teamwork right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it really is Monday, so he's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Boise. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Phoenix. Good morning. Or uh, Reno, excuse me. Good morning, Reno. Good morning. Good morning. And we do have some new hires today. Who wants to go first? <laughs> Hi, Charles. Hi, Vince. I met you last week. I'm Noel Brown, um, client coordinator here at Reno. I'm Kara Spicer. I'm a new CRM in the rookie program. I'm Taylor Sedovic, and I'm a new client coordinator. Welcome. <laughs> and uh, good morning, Las Vegas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Phoenix, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and Salt Lake, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have two new CRMs that will introduce themselves. I'm Trevor Scatlock, new CRM in the rookie training program right now. Welcome. My name is Brian Booth, also new CRM in the rookie training program. <laughs> And there's Sue. Sue's in the corner. <laughs> Sue is, and now she's going in the corner. <laughs> and uh, Houston. Good morning, Houston. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And North Carolina. Good afternoon. Afternoon. How are you? <laughs> well. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> They're top right. top right. There they are. There they are. All right. We covered we covered all of them. Good morning, Mr. Wilson. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm here. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Not delighted, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so excited. We're going to talk today about Birdie Man. Birdie Man. <laughs> So I learned another talent that Mr. Wilson possesses that I don't think many of us know. So, so now we know that you're a poet, but now Man. you're a you're a storyteller. You you wrote a a book. I didn't write a book. I wrote a short story. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 17, I wrote a short story, and it was called Birdie Man. So it was about. Uh, a golfer who uh, hit a lot of birdies. A birdie, for you who are not golfers, is one under par. And it was an interesting story. For me, it was, because I had uh, a little bit of help knowing a little bit about golf. When I graduated high school in 1941, uh, I couldn't get a job. So uh, he's driving me crazy to tell about this. I think. Wait, I, wait, uh, we're not going to go. But the story, the 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 book or the short story, was it inspired by your time as a caddy? I don't know what it was inspired by. <laughs> I think I would just love to write and do things when I was young. And then look, when you get older, you just sit around and do nothing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> 65 push-ups every day. No, I don't do 65. I'm up to 100 now. <laughs> I mean, give me credit, please. <laughs> so this golfer, he, he, there, it's a genie in the story, right? No, there's not a genie. It was just a man who could spell, spell, make spells. And, and so he said, I would love to have a perfect game every day. Right. And he said, careful what you wish for. Right. 
See, the, the theory that, of the um, little story was, be careful of what you wish for. And this birdie man ended up, all he could do was every golf game, he would come in with six to eight, eight birdies. No matter where he hit the ball, he would somehow get into the cup. And as a result, uh, he was a champion for 1936, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little time ago. <laughs> and uh, so he, after winning and winning, he just couldn't stand it anymore, so he quit. <laughs> so he never played the game again. So, it was, you know, be careful of what you wish for. Because sometimes it comes true, and that's not what you want. But that was the story. It was called Birdie Man. So anyway, what, what are we talking about well, that, that for? That, that got the story. That, <laughs> that got you and I talking about your time as a caddy that summer in high school. I don't know if, if uh, many of you know this, but you worked as a caddy. And I've really enjoyed hearing your story about uh, that summer when you spent working as a caddy. Well, in those days, you made a lot of money, you see. Because um, as a caddy in 1941, summer of 41, summer of 41, uh, you could carry uh, one bag around the golf course, and you got 75 cents. That's for 18 holes, only three or four hours. So, uh, and if you carried two bags, you got a buck and a quarter, you know, dollar and a quarter. And this is carrying them over your shoulder the whole time, Both right? of them, yeah. You carried them. You didn't go on that. <laughs> so it was uh, terrific. Uh, and if you uh, were lucky and you got friends with the caddy master, <laughs> then he would give you nice people and they would give you a tip. And so therefore you could make, instead of a a dollar and a quarter for uh, carrying 18 holes with two bags, you could make a dollar fifty. You got a whole quarter, and sometimes you even got a 50 cents because each of the guys would give you a quarter. That was rare, though, you said. Well, yeah, but if you, if, if you got on the wrong side of the caddy master, you got your buck and a quarter. <laughs> he knew who wouldn't tip, right? Yeah, well, he knew who wouldn't tip. So I learned at an early age you want to be nice to your boss. <laughs> so the whole purpose of this meeting is to tell you. <laughs> so we can leave now. <laughs> how, did you serve, how did you support two golfers if the ball went in opposite ends? How did you take care of them with the clubs? Somehow you do what they still do, really. Just ran back and forth? You got to wherever they are, you have to go. And when you, in those days, you got to remember that the bags were leather. It wasn't like a little hot, light canvas bag. <laughs> they were leather. And so when you're 17, yeah, it was just 17, you can carry a lot of things <laughs> when you need the money. Because I was trying to save up enough to go to UCLA. And I needed $27.50 for a semester at UCLA. Your first year at UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> How times have changed. Yes. <laughs> so I got, you know, I actually earned enough money and saved enough that I had enough money to go to UCLA that first year. On a good day, you could earn about $3, right? Because you would try to do two golfers twice That's a right. day. right. So you know something? There has been a little progress in this <laughs> world. <laughs> We don't pay anybody 75 cents, do we? <laughs> a, little, a, little, a little more than that. A little more. Well, so I think I'm going to work here. <laughs> <laughs> but you would earn lunch, too, right? They, they'd well, buy you if, a hot dog. If, they'd buy you a hot dog, mostly. So <laughs> anyway, so listen, got to enjoy what you have. So I did earn enough. Uh, now, we're, what are we talking about? So you, <laughs> <laughs> so you would take care of uh, two sets of golfers. Yeah. You're about $3, and then that's how you earned your way uh, to UCLA. To UCLA. Wow. Yeah. So what was interesting, what I also was hoping you would share is that this golf course started a lot of conversation, and you said that uh, your your mother would send you off to go visit your was it your great aunt and you would drive by the, yeah well that was before then right 
you know, things were different. You, 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 my mother always had concern about other people, and we had a great aunt now living in the old folks' home. So uh, when you're 14, I was younger then in those days, you had to do what your mother said, period. There was no questions, nothing, you just did it. And because uh, my mother was, I've told you, this huge woman, almost five feet tall. <laughs> and she had these piercing brown eyes that could freeze you at 30 feet. You know? <laughs> God forbid you did anything. So anyway, this vicious woman <laughs> would tell me, <laughs> you're going to go visit your aunt. So we lived at the beach at that point. So you'd get on a, a blue bus, you'd ride up to Pico, and then you'd get on a streetcar, and you'd ride all the way around. And an hour later or so, you would uh, end up at, and then walk to the old folks' home and uh, go visit your aunt, your great aunt. Auntie Gold. And she was a character. She sold real estate in Los Angeles in 1910 and made money. So it's, it's, a, it's a, quite an interesting story because she escaped from South Africa in the Boer War, her, she and her husband. So it was an interesting, it's a whole different world 100 years ago. So, But anyway, as we were talking about, you know, we, the bus would go by some of these country clubs and I'd look and see. Oh my God, that's where the rich people are. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's, it's incredible. This one club we always drove by. And then you wound up caddying there. No, I never caddied there because they paid, the, the private clubs paid a lot more. Oh, okay. And it was the public clubs. <laughs> that's that's all where I you get into. <laughs> yeah. So what are we talking about anyway? Why Golf. don't we talk about business? <laughs> They don't want to hear about business. <laughs> we did. We were going to talk about leadership. You were going to talk about taking care of yourself. Well, when we're talking, you know, you have to realize that all of us are leaders in a sense. There are people that you assist or work for or look to you for advice. And one of the great things about working at a place where you can use your talents is that you can think of others. Because if you're only going to think about yourself all the time, you really are not going to have much of a life. And we've talked about this, but it's so true. And we were thinking about leadership in that. and. You were talking about yesterday, Memorial Day. Yeah, we were talking about yesterday, Memorial Day, and how important it was that these wonderful people sacrificed for us. They did quite a job, and all, in every war and every time, these people have done that. For They were sacrificing for us and others. And uh, that's a form of leadership. You've got to realize that if you can help somebody, you're helping yourself. You really are. And I can't tell you how much I, I think about it on Memorial Day particularly, that some of the fellows aren't here with me anymore. They, they're they gone. But a lot of them were leaders. I think in terms of my, when we first went overseas, the, uh, my sergeant in charge of our platoon, uh, they wanted to make him a lieutenant. Uh, he didn't want it because we were uh, in a platoon of elites of um, intelligence reconnaissance where we did reconnaissance and he was going to go in the direct. And uh, I, I think that he was a terrific guy and he was a great leader for us, but they begged him to do it so he did. And of course, he was dead within about three months, three weeks after he was on the front line and leading another platoon. So you think in terms of the sacrifices these people made, and you realize that if you can do things for others, that's what's going to make it better for you. You've accomplished something. If you're going to just live your whole life for yourself, 
you haven't accomplished too much. I think that's what I was going to say. I mean, you said, uh, you know, success is what you use to help others. Yeah, if you can help somebody else, you're a success. If you're just going to stick by yourself, even with your children or your that, what do you got? You got nothing. But let's talk about business. What do you say? Okay. You were talking about in leadership how you can help others and what it meant to be a leader. But we also talked about um, how being active uh, and having a routine uh, plays a big role. You especially, you were going to talk about your routine and how that's helped you uh, throughout your life, having that exercise and reading and body and mind. Well, I think that uh, each one of us has talents that nobody else has. It's your talent. And you should stress what you have. And you should not feel bad that you can't do what somebody else says. But you all know that certain things you do better than others. So those are the things that you should stress and try to improve and do those things. And, and, and try to be aware of the world around you. Because all of us are citizens of this country. And we have to vote no matter what you do. If you don't take care of the country, nobody's going to take care of you. And I, on Memorial Day, I think it's important for us to realize how important we are in our own little capacity. We have to think of what it is to be a citizen of this wonderful country. And I think that's, to me, very important. And when you take care of your body and you do better things for yourself and think in terms of others, that's the most important. If you just destroy yourself, you destroy your families, you destroy everybody. And all of us know that somebody in our families or that is the tragedy of what's happened to them. We're going through a horrible time right now in this country. And we should realize that we're very lucky. I think we've got a family here at the company that's just outstanding. And I, I want to thank each and every one of you for it. Because I see each one of you helping other people. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. So before we go, you, uh, you shared that as a caddy, you would offer advice on the golf course, where the ball, the lies, the thing. <laughs> well, so what was, your, what was your best or worst tip based off of advice you gave? Don't uh, listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth will out, <laughs> as Shakespeare said. Wonderful. We'll see you all next month. Thank you.